when the film ended, the last time I felt that way was Schindler's List and Private Ryan. I didn't know what to say. Just, and, and, and when the film was over, uh, it's not really something you can just talk about. It, it has to live with you for a while. And then I think it's going to be that way with most people that walk out of the theater. I, I don't assume anything. I pray that it will happen. I pray that, because man always has his choice to s reject it. And um, for people that look at me already and say, oh, I hear you are one of those guys, those uh, Christian guys, uh, you know, I gently will say, I hope you see it. I hope you accept it. But you, ha you are a God of your own life. You're going to pick what you want to do. I hope you pick Christ. I hope you, you can see it. I'd say 12 and up. Uh, understanding what they're seeing. Um, there's nothing gratuitous in the film. The violence is there for a purpose. It's just, you know, I think if Private Ryan or Schindler's List, which were both effective films in telling a story of what, of what happened in history and what not to do again, I would say then if those were R-rated films, then this is probably R-rated film. Certainly, it would be a shame if people say, you know, I don't go to our films. Um, you can see what good those two other films have done. This certainly is going to do at least that. In choosing this role, I already made a decision. Now, how it changed me, it was from the beginning of, of uh, doing the movie. I knew that this is the way it's always going to be, so that's... And, you know, Mel actually said that to me when I took the film. He says, you know, he says, you may never work again, but I could go down in the ship. If this is the one that takes me out, that's fine with me. I'd like to work again, but I, uh, I'd never been a guy who, who would sell his soul to get, you know, money or fame. It was never my goal. It was to serve my faith, my God. In the midst of Studio 5 at Chinachita, a long-haired figure appears to be in prayer. He is the actor Jim Caviezel, awaiting his cue to enter Gethsemane. In moments, says Jesus, he will be arrested for the opening shot of The Passion. On the other side of the studio, surrounded by Herod's guard, Mel Gibson is engaged in his own athletic directing style. He tries to help the actors see the bold, at times stark vision that is, for the moment, confined to his head. This kinetic approach surpasses the performance of the day players. What becomes quickly apparent is the passion of the actor-director himself. Gibson is director, co-author, and sole financier of the entire project. The question is, why? Why would one of Hollywood's biggest stars take on a film he himself has described as a career killer? What is his vision? And how is this Jesus picture different from the others? I recently sat down with Gibson to get some answers. Mel, there are roughly 100 Jesus movies. Why do we need another one? 100? I didn't know there was that many. Wow. They just dug up another one from 1916. <laughs> 101. <laughs> yeah, they just found it, and it was like, it's one of the first ones ever on film. It's incredibly um, naive, but it's really kind of interesting to watch it. Um, they go through the entire life in like, it's less than an hour. It's like, wow, it's like rockets that by. Like um, I don't think it's ever been told, um, um, as it should be. I don't think it's ever been adhered to in the way. In what way? Uh, it, it suffers either in most cases that I've seen, and I haven't seen all hundred, so I could be wrong yeah. here. But I've seen like probably the big desert, sure, sure. and um, uh, accuracy, uh, historical accuracy, uh, accuracy uh, as far as the gospels go, uh -huh. accuracy is as far as the extent of um, not only the political turmoil and everything that was going on at the time, but just the uh, um, the extent of the sacrifice and the torture involved, mm -hmm. which is like it's. Uh, no mistake about it, this is graphic, right. um, 
Um, and I would never even recommend that anyone under the age of 12 go and see it because it's hard. Right. Um, but, you know, anybody that does go and see it and sits through it, I think, and my aim is to profoundly change people with it. Yeah, that's my question. Why restrict yourself to just the last 12 hours? Because that's the kind of pinnacle of, um, of, of the sacrifice. I think that's where a lot was achieved. Um, and to try and commit more than that to film, it's almost an impossible task. Yeah. Um, but to, to, to focus on the, um, on the high point, or the low point, if you like, mm -hmm. of uh, uh, leading up to the climax of the whole thing, where it all just happens, I think. Also, I can, I can feed back into previous scenes. You know, there's flashbacks to little pieces of scenes right. that suggest and remind uh, people who are familiar with the, uh, the material, if yeah. you call it that. <laughs> Um, um, exactly, you know, what, what, where it all came from. And what, what this all really means. It yeah. sort of underscores, and I, I read the script, there's a lot of uh, attention to The Last Supper really? uh, as, as you go along. Uh -huh. What's the, what's the, why visually cast it in that way? Well, I, I wanted to juxtapose the, the sacrifice of the cross with the sacrifice of the altar, which is uh, the same thing, uh -huh. um, and just kind of demonstrate that. Yeah. That as he's being uh, tortured and murdered and killed and everything um, uh, that you cut back and through the eyes of John who's at the foot of the cross you just cut back to him remembering like oh yeah with the bread and the wine and the, I get it uh. so that it, it he the penny drops for him at that point mm -hmm. now I don't know whether the penny did drop for him at that point or not but I think he was a pretty smart guy and it, maybe it did mm -hmm. Hollywood rolls out the red carpet and to be honest they produce great little fluff pieces. This yeah. is not receiving that sort of acclaim. They're saying the strangest Hollywood project to come along in years. Why really? the icy reception? Why that weird uh, suspicion? Well, it's, it's, it's not done in a language that they understand, and it's dealing with material that could be uh, dangerous. It's dangerous material. Mm -hmm. um, you're talking about the single event that probably influenced civilization mm -hmm. as we know it mm -hmm. now. Uh, even in the negative aspects, in some way, you could say that it, it, it goes back to that. I mean, it, it's, you know, created our laws and um, behavior and, um, you know, the knowledge of good and evil and all that kind of stuff. It's influenced art um, and uh, literature and, and every, it's, it's affected every possible aspect of anyone's life. Whether they know it or not, it has. Mm -hmm. And um, so that this is big stuff you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. and. It's 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 um, it's going to be graphic and it's going to be accurate as I can make it. It has uh, areas of uh, poetic license that I've added to it mm -hmm. that I see as not unreasonable. Right. Um, and um, uh, now some would say, why do you have to be so graphic? That removes the art. That that kills the imagination that we can all apply to this. No, no. By being so on the nose. No, no. That's that's it's a puzzle that I have. I think. Uh, what I have to do is be truthful to the to to take you through suffering with it. Mm -hmm. The audience has to suffer to understand it uh, more. And and what I'm seeking here is a deeper understanding of this event, and and um, um, as well as being graphic and probably in your face a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not always like that. I mean, I use a certain art to get around some of that, and I think that even in the the more horrific aspects of it, I've tried to incorporate a beauty to it. Mm -hmm. So that um, it's a balance. And, and, and you pulled back a little bit from what your original intention oh yeah. for this. I mean, originally... Hey, if I really, if I put down exactly what happened, it's too, it's too hard to take. Mm -hmm. um, and you found that in the doing. When, once you were shooting it or you laid it out and you said, I can't go there. Some parts, yeah. And, and like, you know, I mean... You know, you're not going to see every foot and hand get nailed and stuff, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you'll certainly know it's going on. Um, you won't see every hit of the whip, but you'll know it's happening. Um, um, and when it does happen, it's going to be in a very realistic... When you do see it, it'll be very realistic. So you won't quite know when you're going to see it and when you're not, which will add to the sort of, I suppose, you know, grip in the armchair thing. Uh -huh. um, you know, I know it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but it's the way I want to present it, and uh, uh, it speaks to me that way, and that's all I know. You said in a recent interview, when you approach this sort of material, this subject, you draw enemies. Sure. What did you mean by that? Well, I think there is 
in the world there is good and bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, anybody who wants to um, tell a story of this magnitude about the nature of good and evil is going to draw people uh, who are influenced by something dark. And it's going to um, um, come and afflict you in some way. And I'm not just talking about only people. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a whole other realm because I believe in these realms. You know, right. I believe there's realms outside our own. Mm -hmm. If I didn't, um, then I, I, um, you know, I would, I would wonder about the point of this here mm -hmm. now, breathing. Mm -hmm. If there isn't something else outside this realm, then I'm a little late on world conquest, <laughs> is all I'm trying to say, <laughs> and total subservience of every living creature to my will. <laughs> so, um, uh, I mean, that's a really harsh way of putting it. I but got it. But there's something bigger than this. If, there's, something, if mm -hmm. there's not something bigger than this, why am I trying? Tell me about the authenticity of this film. Well, it's, it's, um, I'm trying to make it as authentic as I possibly can, right down to the clothing. Yeah. Right down to the eating customs of of, uh, of the Jews of the old law, mm -hmm. and um, um, and to make it truly about people, a man born into the house of David mm -hmm. um, in Jerusalem. I mean, the Pharisees are all there, and uh, and so God, when I saw Jim the other day, this is the most Jewish-looking Christ I've seen on film. Well, he should be. You know, normally he looks so Aryan. I mean, gosh. Sure. <laughs> yeah, they usually got the. The blue-eyed guy, and Jim has blue eyes. Yes, yes he does. Uh, but I'm going to change that. Mm -hmm. In in uh, um, digitally, I'll I'll make his eye color different. It'll be more like that Coptic look, you know. Um, and of course, we fiddled with his facial features a bit, right. made him look like he comes from a more rugged time, and make him look like he comes from the Middle East. He he looks Semitic in in uh, the way he looks looks right. Semitic. Um, the woman playing his mother, she's Romanian, she's Jewish, and she's just beautiful. There's great big soulful brown eyes, you know, and she's giving it everything. She's amazing, you know. Talk to me about the Marian component here. The Mary is really uh, a key figure in this. Normally, she fades to the background. You don't see yeah, her to the final her, yeah. end of the reel. Yeah, right. She's here every step of the way. She goes Why through Why was it. that important? Uh, because I think she suffered as much, almost. I mean, she didn't have to bear the wounds and stuff, but imagine if it was your child. Yeah. And not only that, but your child who you know is a deity. I mean, imagine that, what that's doing to you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was absolutely necessary to sort of put her right there on the front row to watch the whole thing mm -hmm. and to see her sort of bear it and to see her suffer it. Um, and uh, she's done a remarkable job, you know? Do you think some of the, and, and, and there have been those, uh, perhaps quietly at this point, who say, you know, Mel Gibson's totally crazy to do a project like this. What's he doing? Yeah. Do you think that's religiously motivated? Is, is there a bit of religious bigotry in there? Is there a bit of suspicion for what you believe? I don't know. And there a discomfort with your acting on that belief, or at least allowing that belief to shape what you're involved in here? I think from a a totally sort of earthbound point of view, it's just bad business decision. It's like, what? well, there's a lot of dough to throw at that. It's not even in the language we understand. <laughs> and it's going to like repel a lot of people. What, what's the deal? But it's like, um, it's like childbirth. I mean, it's either got to whelp itself out or mm -hmm. I, I just got to do it. It's one of those things. And chips fall where they may, you know. What about the language? Let's talk about the language for a second. Why in Aramaic? It's just totally i mean once uh, once you see a hunk of this all chopped together and people are talking that language it's utterly riveting for me now i don't understand i think i think the image hopefully the image will transcend the language now and you'll be able to tell your story very clearly without the aid of a language that you know mm -hmm. however any knowledge on the subject will kind of give i'll give you little clues all along the way and it's it's um also something very real about it and and also many of the people involved in the casting I, you haven't seen you know Burt Lancaster's not in it okay <laughs> it's just guys you've never <laughs> it's guys you've never seen before you know Jim Caviezel people may have seen him mm -hmm. but he doesn't even look like himself in this I mean he just looks different he looks like Christ and um, um, so that he is and, and a very um, if I may say so the best looking one I've ever seen I mean he's masculine he's like uh, he doesn't look too pretty or any, you know. And that, that worried you about the other ones you've seen, the previous depictions of Jesus, a little too ethereal. Yes, yeah, exactly, a little effeminate uh, and, and just not, they weren't guys that worked on a piece of wood for, you know, yeah. however long, you know. 
uh, making tables and cabinets. How much of that moment, that sacrifice, how important is that moment that you're trying to depict on film to your faith? To me? To you. How important is that? Right. That it, sacrifice. It's everything. It's, it's, um, um, it's absolutely everything. I mean, if, the, if it wasn't, what would there be? There would be nothing. Um, there would only be world conquest and mm -hmm. dominion over every human being on the planet. You know, I mean, yeah. hey, why not go for it? And that's <laughs> if you're going to go out, go out big. Yeah. But um, uh, might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb, something like that. A stitch in time <laughs> saves nine. You have any others? No, I'm out. Me either. <laughs> um, but um, uh, that... The, the, the incarnation, all these things, the, the, the message, the, the, the complete and total deposit left with us, mm -hmm. and the backing up of all those things, uh, and the fruition of all those things, is, uh, it's a pretty clear message, I think, and it's, it's, um, it's, it's unfortunate that more people don't heed it. It's been a tough shoot for you. I mean, you've had flu, everybody here is sick, yeah, yeah. Steve was coughing on me earlier, Jim's yeah. been ill, yeah. pulled the shoulder, I mean, everybody seems that this is not an easy, sweet shoot. Yeah, no. It's, it's full of discomfort. Jim's actually suffered quite a bit on the cross. I mean, it's like one time when, they were, when he was being beaten, some of the guys got him with those things. I mean, he had marks and welts on his back. It was like, I mean, he's, he's getting some of it. And sometimes I think, you know, one day he was like, he was getting a headache and it was like, it was, um, and I thought, I wonder if he's experiencing something a little otherworldly here. I wasn't quite sure um, because it seemed to be just coming from nowhere and it was, um, uh, but... No, there have been a lot of uh, obstacles thrown in the way. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of, uh, what would you call it, poltergeist activity or something. I don't know. St a lot of, lot of things thrown Spiritual in the way. Spiritual stuff happened. And, and I understand that it's the other realm warring. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe that that's a very real thing. Mm -hmm. And I've taken steps wherever I can to sort of like um, uh, put on some armor. Like what? Um, I, there's a, an old priest every day says the Mass every day. And... Um, um, and then try and just stay squeaky clean myself. That's all. I mean, it's like, uh, and oh, that's a tough job. It's, <laughs> Tell me all about it. Yeah, really. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, um, kind of like, you know, detergent for your soul. Mm. But, uh, um, and just try and just get through this. But having um, engaged it like that, mm -hmm. and having given such credence to things that are so intangible as the other realms of good and evil. I think it's really drawn the whole thing into focus and we're all struggling over a piece of film. And it's a piece of film after all, it's not the real event. But I'm hoping that, um, my, my hope is that, um, and it's, it's very strong, uh, even for me watching it, it's very strong. And I, I know how it's being put together, like when it's finally put together it's going to be ten times as strong. Um, so that my hope is that anyone who goes in and can manage to stay through it and suffer through with it, you know, they should be given like a little bad. <laughs> I went to see and I actually sat through the end reel, which is, it's necessary to keep it like 90 minutes because it's just, uh, two hours of this is just, it'd, it'd make you go nuts. But, um, um, but that they're changed when they leave. I mean, I mean I, I'm, I'm seeking a, a, that anyone who views it has a profound change.